All right, maybe you can all hear me now. Can you hear me now? All right, Apollo 79, good to see you. That was frustrating. But we're back. So I just wanted to say hello to everybody. I know it's been a while since I've live streamed. And we're here in the old RV right now. You probably can't see a whole lot of what's going on inside, but... It has been, you know, 50s or so overnight the last couple of nights, and good thing I got a heated blanket. Yeah, I guess it's working now. Um, <laughs> the interwebs is certainly being kind of a putz right now. <coughs> I'm connected to the house Wi-Fi, which is probably about 75 feet behind me, and if I elevate my device high enough, it will connect, so I actually have to have it like elevated probably like 7 or 8 inches off the table here for me to connect to the Wi-Fi. But if it's on the table, then it's like super spotty and weather... <laughs> It wants to connect or not is it's totally up to itself so yeah I just wanted to say hello to everybody and kind of give you a quick update on kind of things that are going on for me recently um, I've been trying to get out as you know much as I can uh, I do have a part-time job so I do work during the week so it's always fun to see the commenters tell me that I need to get a job and I have no life and everything but these are people that are have you know common knowledge about my life and what I want to do with my spare time where if I sat at home and I just sat and play video games all day you know you'd be you wouldn't know that I'm doing that but you'd be okay with that because I'm not out in the public talking to the public right so you guys know nothing about me um, the trolls the demons, the energy harvesters, the people out there who just have this absolute disdain for me uh, going out in public and sharing any kind of truth that would go against, you know, common mainstream narrative is actually quite funny. And you are actually encouraging me to keep going out there. So whatever, like, psychological mumbo-jumbo you think that you're going to try to get me to you know, stop doing what I'm doing is, to is totally not working. So just a heads up. Um, it actually helps me and it encourages me to go out. Um, whether you, you know, believe in the Bible or not, um, Paul in the New Testament traveled all over the place. And I, I can totally understand the demonic entities that are out there to try to hold you back from being active and sharing any kind of truth that goes against this world's narrative. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, you, you feel like if you're like in junior high and like if you get vulgar enough and if you try to say things that would probably affect most, um, you know, flat earth activists or whatever, it's going to drag them down. And I see people getting drug down to a pit where they don't feel comfortable talking about flat earth anymore uh, out in public and and they really just basically don't go out of their way to um oh, 
So it appears that my uh, interwebs isn't working very well. Yeah, you know, it's totally like spotty. I, I have uh, like a hundred foot Ethernet cable that I can connect, but I gotta buy a Wi-Fi router to put inside the RV, so I have. Um, so I have more consistent Wi-Fi inside here. Uh, the RV is basically like a giant tin can and doesn't allow any kind of service, whether it be from my phone or, or Wi-Fi from the house. So, I mean, that's annoying. Um, so I can't really like, you know, do too many live streams or do too many Google Hangouts or anything like that, um, with people and talk because you know, the phone just isn't capable of, so talking on the phone is basically the best option for me, or else I have to leave the RV altogether, so I know that you all are probably listening to me right now, but can you all, like, hear me and see me, I know that the live stream cut out there for a minute, so I probably, probably didn't hear a whole lot of my amazing things that I had to say, but um, yeah, so I mean, activism right now is, is kind of something that if you, if you don't see like results continually and people aren't calling you up and saying, Hey, you know, um, I appreciate you coming out and talking to me about flat earth. Now I'm a flat earther. You're not going to get that most, most of the time. You're not going to get emails from people or see some see the same person on the street and they're going to shake your hand and say, because of you, now I'm a flat earther. Just, I don't think that that's going to happen very often. And if you're an activist, you are engaging in that um, idea that you will not be rewarded. So you need to get kind of like the reward, um, the sharing reward system out of your head, because that's not going to happen, and if, if you feel like you're downtrodden about, like, how you feel about Flat Earth, just my opinion, I would suggest talking to other Flat Earthers, maybe on a private chat, instead of, because what I feel like it does is it creates a spirit of, you know, doubt and, you know, where if, if you're talking to other, you know, people about flat earth and you're not seeing results and you're getting name called and you're getting pushed around verbally, um, that is going to affect your daily life. Cause then you're going to think, well, this isn't even worth it. This, there's no point in this. But again, not everybody walks around with a stripe on their back and you have like your Jack in the box x-ray glasses to be able to see, hey, turn around. Oh, you don't have a stripe on your back. Uh, have a nice day. You know, and then the people that do have stripes on their back, you look at them and be like, oh, okay, now I can talk to you about Flat Earth. You have to talk to every single person that you feel led to talk to or that comes and talks to you. Brand new, nothing should be uh, implied you should not have any expectations, and to, I'm going to say this like sternly, you need to understand when to walk away, and when to say, you know what, this person isn't going to get it right now, I am wasting my time, I, I mean, basically, that, in so many words, that sounds harsh, but with particular people, you are wasting your time, give people an opportunity, give people a couple of minutes, let them you can hear the truth in their heart. You can hear it. If you can't hear it by now, you have a long ways to go. You can hear whether they get what you're saying or if they're mocking you. Okay? I, I'm not saying that I'm... <clears throat> oh, you're such a piece of garbage.
Yeah. So, and you need to be patient with electronics, right? Um, hey, Dustin. Mac, good to see you. Steve. Angel Raven, good to see you. Long, long time, no see. Mikey Smith. I'll just say hi to everybody and wait for the interwebs to cooperate here. See if we can get back on track. Um, on that on that point, um, <laughs> I, I get, I sit here and I get really frustrated watching these live streams with people, and when the interwebs goes out on you, you immediately jump to the government is shutting you down because of the conversation that you're having. You're, that's unbelievable. You, you immediately jump to that when you have people when you have people in the live stream trying to listen to you who are brand new and you're making it seem like everybody's against you you know like all oh, the interwebs is cutting out so they must be against me no maybe you just have a crappy signal right because 50,000 other people are trying to connect to the same tower right now you know like give me a break with that Um, yeah, I might do that, um, Dustin, because this, I mean, the thing about it is, is like this, it's so like, um, spotty inside here and it, and it is quite frustrating. So, um, if you want to give me like two minutes, I'll set something up outside and you know, it's nice outside anyways. So, um, just give me like a minute.
Okay. Wow. That took forever. Apologies, everybody, for that. I had to... I had to come outside. Now we're outside. Inside the RV, it just... It's like a, a tomb of metal everywhere. And the Wi-Fi is, just doesn't work very well. So, yeah, there she is, right behind me. That's what we have set up. So, all right. So let's say hi to everybody. She got helicopters. Pmar is good to see ya. Dave, Zoom Truth, good to see ya. So what was I talking about? Pmars, are you even gonna come to spread the truth in Fargo? Why would I want to go to Fargo where you guys? Try to impersonate Minnesotans. All right, Marilyn, good to see you. Uh, slow mode. Slow mode means that you know people can't come in and get rowdy and spam. Oh, Halstead. So Halstead is one of those that says to get a life. I don't have a job. Yada yada yada. You're fun. Uh, Scott. Scott, positively godless. He's demonic. That guy has a demon in him. Um, physics rocks. Good to see you. So, yeah, it's been a while. Fred Carr. Haven't done a live stream in uh, quite a while. Um, a lot of people ask me, like, why I don't do live streams and whatnot. You know, trial and error. Doing the whole, like, family guy bit with the videos and, like, streaming them and putting videos in the middle to kind of talk about to help with the topic that's being spoken about while I'm talking to people that is on point like that I didn't that didn't even cross my mind until a couple of months ago and the whole family guy bit I thought that was a pretty good um idea and <laughs> I I think that that is the best um, personally for me, I'm not trying to toot my horn, right? But I don't want anybody else's lips on my horn. Um, I thought that was pretty good. Um, and that's one, that's probably like the main reason why I don't, um, live streaming also, there's a lot of choppiness that can happen. Um, it can be difficult to, you know, get consistent connection <coughs> and whatnot. So Helps all the, you know, millennials and, you know, first world problem people with high definition film. So then I can just upload it in high def and people can enjoy it that way. And so I think that's the best um, thing that I've come up with. Um, just to recap, uh, I know that some people were asking me how RV, RV life was going. Um, it's got its ups and downs for sure already just in the last like six weeks. Um, one thing I wish I would have had done, but I was kind of tight on schedule and like timing and whatnot was probably have like an extra $500 to be able to take care of the plumbing that I got going on. Cause I don't have any running water or, um, the furnace that I do have, but I need to have somebody come by and check the furnace out and make sure that that's up and running. Um, one thing that I'm going to do to winterize the RV is um, stick cardboard on the inside and outside of all the windows and then duct tape them and then put over the plastic lining, you know, that people put over to kind of insulate and whatnot. So I think that'll be um, a good idea to do with that. Otherwise, like, it's interesting. Like, it, it is... Unless you feel like you're being led to do it, I wouldn't jump into it. I would think about it for probably like six months or a year. Um, having lived in Thailand for, you know, almost a year and experiencing the limitations on, you know, showering in lukewarm water or cold water mostly, um, having very, very cheap food everywhere, 
paying like 200 bucks a month for rent. Um, I, I think that, and, and just basically witnessing a second and third world country for me was really the catalyst that helped propel me into the thought life of living a more minimalized lifestyle. When I got home, I had a 60 inch LG TV, 3D surround sound. Like I had all that jazz. I had people come over, we'd watch movies and it was, it was the place to be to watch movies and sports and video games and, you know, game on computer. I mean, gaming on a 60 inch TV is pretty mind blowing, especially if you can get it set up to do 3d. So, um, if you're not if you're not really ready to separate yourself from stuff like that, and it's gonna take you a while, um, it's something to think about. Um, but you know, again, me doing that isn't gonna change the hundred million people that go to these games tonight, right now, the NFL football games that are going on right now. <clears throat> all I can be is my ooh, all I can be is myself. I can only be an example. Um, for others, if they're being led in that direction, otherwise, you know, I mean, let's be honest. A lot of people are looking at flat Earth activism, um, whether it be uh, what the Hori Sheet Show does, what I do, what Zoom Truth does, what Steve does, what Dell does, what John Smith Globely does, what Roxanne do. They're looking at it as entertainment, unfortunately, and. It's going to take a particular person to be able to get up off of their chair and stop watching and then get out and, and being active. Now, you don't have to videotape it. Like, I see PMARs like, hey, I talked about Flat Earth. Should I, video, should I have videotaped it? Well, you know, you don't have to, right? I mean, come on. Um, little things. I mean, you can wear, like, a Flat Earth t-shirt. You can drop cards off, you know, when you're done eating at a restaurant and tip somebody little things like that and then you can hopefully they'll be led into you know that type of truth because flat earth is the ultimate red pill it's the gateway truth drug um, so a lot of people who are are still unfamiliar with you know 9-11 even um, and simple things like 5g is a big thing 5g is really important to me um, whether or not you believe artificial intelligence that they have supercomputers um, that's totally a speculation, obviously, but 5G is a real thing, and people have seen what 4G is doing just in terms of health effects. There's a lot of funny things that are coming out right now regarding 5G. A news article just came out recently talking about somebody having illnesses uh, regarding being around 5G already. Scare tactics or truth, who knows, you know, who really knows right now. Um... But that is important to me because that is that is going to affect how we communicate. We, they are trying to kind of incorporate us into um, always being on our phones. Even yesterday, like, so you guys can take this idea and roll with it if you want, make you a million dollars, because I don't care. But when I was downtown um, at the university um, yesterday, I was thinking about, because I'm always seeing people holding their phone in front of them, Right. And they're walking and, and they're just kind of like this, right? So they don't run into each other or fall off a cliff. I was thinking about getting like a strap around your chest, right? And having like an arm come out and having it hold your phone right in front of you. So your hands free, but you have like this like, <laughs> right? <laughs> this alien, right? This alien thing coming out of your chest that's holding your phone for you. And so you can, you know, instead of having to hold your phone with one hand and hold your Starbucks coffee in another, you're totally hands-free and you're able to just walk around. So, come up with that idea. It's up to you. Uh, market that if you want. But I just kind of thought that way because that is the idea of like zombies. <coughs> um, so it's just something I was thinking about. But um, Let's see. Satan, Prince of Darkness. Come on. Uh, simulation Dweller, good to see you. Let's see who else is in here. All is one now. Good to see you. Thanks a lot. Sea Oddity. Good to see you. 
Um, thanks a lot, Mikey Smith. <laughs> I should call you Mikey Swift, huh? Um, so a couple of things that I wanted to talk about that I don't tend to have an opportunity to talk to with people because when you're when you're standing in front of somebody and unless the conversation is led a particular way, I don't usually try to like steer it, you know, to go a particular um, direction. I want it to just flow and go the way that it's supposed to. But, so my idea on the Southern Celestial Poles, right? Everybody wants to keep saying how the Southern Celestial Poles destroys, you know, um, Flat Earth. It doesn't. And this is my idea. And this is just regarding how I feel the Earth is. May or may not be an infinite plane with just more shores, shorelines, and more ocean, and so on. And really, if you think about it, I mean, I'm not saying, like, Christopher Columbus didn't come from Europe to come to North America, but with that same idea in mind, if we here now were to collectively, as a human race, get funds together in a group that we could all trust and then venture off into the wild blue yonder, if you will, could we come up to another part of land now my thought with this right now is the north pole is the center like it is it is where the center of our creation is it's like people people i don't know i've thought about this and i'll just say it just to say it so then i can know whether i i'm i feel right about it but the north pole is like where we were created and the North Pole area, now whether how big that is, it could be the size of America, right? I mean, seriously. But let's just say that we were all created in the North Pole with the Northern Star above us. And then we all started to venture out. So we all just started to venture outwards. So if you're thinking of the AE map, we just start going south, right? Well, if we keep going south, we are going to run into... A pole that is similar to the North Pole and we will call it the Southern Celestial Pole okay so if we see the Southern Celestial Pole and we continue to traverse like we see it and we're traversing and we understand cosmology and we understand the constellations and everything and we continue to travel that way guess what soon the Southern Celestial Pole will be our new North Pole Okay, does that make sense? Are you following me here? So you're continuing to go until the North Pole is out of your perspective. So then at that pole above you that we call the Southern Celestial Pole will be our new North Pole. Now, whether that's a magnetic North Pole that we could use like how it is now, I don't know. But let's just say for argument's sake that it is. So then all of a sudden the North Pole will be the Southern Celestial Pole. Okay, I mean, you're following me here. So, now we have the new Southern Celestial Pole. If we continue to go south, okay, then we have what we would call the Southern Celestial Pole now is is traveling further away. And who knows, maybe there's another Southern Celestial Pole. And so on and so on and so on. Okay? So, the Southern Celestial Pole does not at all debunk flat Earth. It doesn't prove spherical models. It proves that if we continue to go south, we will soon have that light above us. And then if we continue to go south, we will may have another light above us. So that's all I'm saying with the Southern Celestial Pole. I've been thinking a lot about this. I've been praying a lot about this. I don't know whether that's true or not. (coughs) But the whole idea, and I get it. I get the whole Antarctic Treaty, ice wall, so on and so on. I personally, my opinion about the Antarctic Treaty and the Ice Wall, I think it's fear-mongering to keep us from going south. Now, do I care about what's south? I really don't, to be honest with you. I want to see what's at the North Pole. I want to see if the North Pole is really the center of our creation. Now, along with that idea of the Southern Celestial Pole, if we continue to go south, right? Now, Christian... Um, he came up with this idea. I saw a meme of it. Um, let me show it to you real quick. Oh, 
see if this works. So we have like the idea of like the center is the North Pole, right? And then we have all the land masses around us, and then we have other land masses around us in that part also, right? <coughs> yeah, it's not showing up. Um, oh, I know why. <laughs> okay, hang on a second. Another thing too about RV life flies flies everywhere when it's like 60 or 55 or or better and sunny flies come out All right, I'm totally going to get to my point here. Okay. I thought this was, you know, I don't have any original ideas, just like all the rest of you. So I stole this. I told them I'd use it. So you, you see how it says outer space, right? The idea is they're not technically lying, right? See what I'm, you see where that where I'm coming from with that? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> saucy London, right? Yeah, the penguins. I, I'm telling you, they we guard a lot. We guard a lot. Um, so when it says when they're saying outer space, right? Are they technically lying? Now, when when they're saying when they're saying outer, if I say outer space to a college student, where is their mind going to immediately go to? I mean, right? Outer space, the sky, right? But just something to think about when the establishment talks about outer space, could this be, could this be what they're referring to? You know, now whether this is true or not, this is obviously speculation. And it's fun to speculate, right? Because we don't know anything. <coughs> You all see me okay? Um, so that's that's kind of the idea. That's just where my when I saw this, I was like, okay, because it kind of went along with the whole Southern Celestial Pole idea. Now, if if we were to traverse south, and and we were to travel outward, would we come across another race of human beings? Okay, that may or may not know about us. Right? I mean, now we can't assume that this this other human race that is out there is going to know who we are. We can't assume that they are as technologically advanced as we are. Because clearly, us as human beings here now in 2018, we are severely um, not technologically advanced. Just because we have touch pads and, and VR and stuff like that. People still believe that gravity is the reason that things are the way that they are. When electromagnetism, uh, buoyancy and density, dia diametrics, diamagnetism is a thing. Tesla uh, converting energy from the ground and harnessing it from the sky is free stuff. Um, it, it's We're just not there right now. I mean, even using vibration to move heavy objects across uh, land. Super, super high frequency uh, vibration to be able to move stuff. Um, and even um, 
Cosmic Surfer, he did a video a while back regarding how they built the pyramids. Right? I mean, they're still telling us that they drug these ton, uh, hundreds of tons of, of whatever from one spot to another. When possibly in reality, it was just basic concrete. And they were just building like squares. Like they had a cast mold. And then all that they did was just dumped the concrete in it. And then it was so like lined up that, yeah, you, you can't stick a finger in it or, or a piece of paper or anything because it's so, because it's just concrete. So they're tricking the kids' minds into thinking that these uh, pyramids are like these marvels, but they're really not. It's just basic concrete. And we're, we're turning things into something that in our reality that things are not. And so when you get back to the outer space part with the picture there, um, is would we just be another Colum Christopher Columbus where we would travel to another land and then in that culture, in that culture, we would become Christopher Columbus history over a period of time? You know, then you have speculation of, you know, well, maybe the elites who die, graduate or get uh, some kind of uh, promotion and then they go up to the outer rings that we see here. Well, I mean, that could be possible. Um, I was, th I, you know, so I just, I, I thought that was something interesting. Um, so I just, yeah, I just have the traveling to new lands will reveal new beings. Um, whether those beings are... Nephilim giants or whatever. Um, I don't know. I have always, I have recently in the past couple of months Started to think that we are grasshoppers, you know how Joshua and Caleb they talk about like how we are like grasshoppers to these people Well in a sense we are like grasshoppers because the trees. I mean some of these trees really only average probably like what? 30 40 50 feet tall so if you think like if the if the trees before us here as human beings these scrawny little six foot tall human beings walking around we are like grasshop we are like grasshoppers in this environment that we're in so thinking of thinking of like a yard right with grass and you walk around if you guys have seen honey i shrunk the kids right well in honey i shrunk the kids they're walking around what appears to look like to them a jungle. And so as as they're, you know, whether you believe this or not, as they're chemtrailing us, as they're allowing different particles to fall down on us, we have, you know, like, we have our, our little area that we live in, right? So let's just say for reference sake, this, this coffee cup is 100 feet, okay? Um, maybe 100, 200 feet, you know, for like a skyscraper. And so we have all this pollution right here. And we're down here. And we got trees that are coming up to no bigger than to right here. So we have an at atmosphere of pollution that's just, you know, in, in this area, in this, in this, um, that gets no higher than maybe two or 300 feet. So it's all settling down because all of the chemicals or the particles or whatever it is in the air, now whatever you want to speculate it is, that's fine. You go ahead. But all that air that's up above us has to come down at some point. And so we are in this environment. So what are we going to do about it? You know, like how are we going to be able to filter the air? And that's, I see a lot of people using like filtration systems in their house, like you're ionizing and... To be able to filter out the air so that you can you're breathing in you know proper clean air right well once we get up to a particular level you know like an airplane for example we're able to see further and when people are using their infrared cameras and so on they're able to see through all the pollutants the dust the wind the storms and so on and so on and yeah, I think that the establishment knows that maybe it is something similar to the picture that you're seeing right now. I'm not saying it's 100%, but I do think that it is an infinite plane with just more shorelines, 
Now, whether there's another sun in that outer ring, I don't know. Whether the sun that we see now is a simulated sun from a larger sun somewhere, I don't know. I don't know how biblical that is. Um, I know that, you know, before we even had the sun and the moon, our creator was the light. I mean, think about that. Before the sun that we see, that we're so conditioned to see, because that's our reality, and the, and the moon that we're going to see tonight, that's uh, on, almost on full blast. Before that, our creator was the light. Light everywhere. There was no darkness. And so, because of, if you want to go along with the biblical narrative, because of sin, you know, um, I, I think that we have conditioned ourselves into the, the slavery of just being contained in this area that we have right here. You know, um, I guess that's kind of kind of my thoughts on that with the Southern Celestial Pole and so on and so on. Um, so I'll get back to the to the chat real quick. Come up for air. Um, thanks, Brandon Cook. Good to see you. Um, Evil Company, are you close to funding your trip to the upcoming Flat Earth Conference? Um, almost. Um, I, I, the reason why I put that up there is because I felt like I wanted to give people an opportunity to fund another Flat Earther that they feel is as genuine that they have seen over the past, what, you know, almost two years or so. And somebody who gets it done, somebody who goes out to the public and actually walks the walk and talks the talk, give you an opportunity to fund somebody like that because it's my missions field, you know. And anybody that does activism, it's their missions field also. You know, whether you're doing it on camera in the public eye or you're just as simply wearing a t-shirt, you know, that's your missions field. And just because I felt led to bring up the topic and ask, never underestimate the power of asking, and our Father asks us to ask, and there are other people in the community that if you ask them, they will provide. I mean, so, if you have this, like, this sense about you that, you know, this person's asking and they should have a job and so on and so on, <clears throat> you know, that's, that's fine. You know, that's where you're at and you'll be held accountable for those types of thoughts. Um, but if you feel led to help somebody who wants to go to the Flat Earth International Conference, and I really don't have any money. Like, I really don't. <laughs> I mean, I work a part-time job and most of my time is spent doing flat earth activism. You know, so I'm the real deal. You know, I don't mean, I don't do this very often, but... I mean, come on, right? I mean, I, I this is what I do. And I don't care about the negativity that comes my way. A lot of people say, how can you deal with all of the name-calling and the vulgarity? Why do you even go to those places when you know you're going to be made fun of and ridiculed and the conversations aren't going to go your the right way well because i don't go to a i don't go to where people are healthy that's not me i don't go to where people are healthy i go to where people are sick where people need help where people need to hear truth in their ears whether they can whether they hear it subconsciously or whether i'm actually talking to them like with john the other day or danny yesterday you know, those are people that are, uh, they want to hear truth. They're hungry for truth. They just don't know where to go. And praise God, last week, last Sunday, I got a phone call from Robbie Davison. He offered me an opportunity to speak for 40 minutes at the Flat Earth International Conference. I was not expecting that. April 22nd, 2017, last year, I did not expect all of this. You know, I'm just, I'm just doing it. I'm just doing, that's all I'm doing. I'm just doing it. And to be given now that opportunity, I was totally floored. And I can't thank you enough for that opportunity, Robbie. Uh, I can't thank 
anybody. I mean, I, I, I mean, I can't thank you enough. And, you know, I'm not going <laughs> to, you know, I'll give you a big hug and I'll shake your hand. Um, but we all know that we have a particular um, role to play. You know, if you're an ear, you can't be a nose, okay? If you're an eye, you can't be a mouth. You can't be a foot if you're an arm. You can't be all these different things. You have to depend on other people to do things. And you're gonna if you're not <laughs> if you're not doing it right and you're not getting criticized, you're doing something wrong. You know? You're you you have inner demons inside of you that are bubbling up over and all of the the name calling and, and the negative conversations that you have with people, um, you're pick you're picking the wrong battles then. Pick your battles. You know? Don't argue with your friends about Flat Earth for an hour. Just let them go. Move on to somebody else. You have to you have to protect yourself. You have to protect your own heart, your own path. The way that you communicate with people, you have to protect yourself. And you just have to let people go. You know, there's nothing wrong with letting people go, you know. <laughs> Lee Edwards, good to see you. Uh, Rabbi, shouldn't Israel be in the center of... of my, come on, man. Um, <laughs> um, what lays beyond the ice wall? Who, where's the ice wall? And I see I see a bunch of ice cliffs. You know, I've never been down there before. If somebody actually if we actually I would I would start it. I would I would start it, a GoFundMe. Would you contribute? Now we would probably need like probably like a hundred thousand dollars, quarter of a million dollars to have like twenty people in a in a massively large ice breaking ship. To go down there, and we would have to be armed, and we would have to say, no, we are going south. We are going south. This is what we're doing. Now, you can take your Antarctic Treaty, okay? We are going south. We are human beings. We have a right to more land if there's more land. You cannot keep us from that. Same thing with the north. You give me a quarter of a million dollars... And you direct me to the people that you feel that we should have on this trip, like Brian Mullen, okay? We will go. We will take over the North Pole, and we will find out what's up there. And we will come back with genuine testimony and videography of our trip, north or south. You know, I've had it with this. Well, I'm tired of this place. Aren't you tired of this? You know, like Sunday now, it's football. Everybody's just staring at a bunch of overpaid actors, athletes. Catch a pigskin. Come on. Let them have it. If that's what they want, let them have it. If you don't want it anymore, then get on board and let's start making treks to get out of here, to go to outer space. Okay, if they want that, if they want the sky, let them have it. Because guess what happened the last time they tried to make a Tower of Babel? Okay? He will take care of them if they want to go up there. Okay? He will take care of us if we want to go out here. North or south, whichever you want to choose. You want to take the Southern Celestial Pole option and find out that there's another Celestial Pole even further south? Then let's do it. I'll do it. I'll die. I got, I got cystic fibrosis. I'm 37 years old. Every time I wake up, I probably cough up at least two tablespoons of mucus right now. I am sick. I have an infection. You know, I appreciate the people that say, hey, you know, um, I, I've noticed that you haven't been coughing very much during your activism videos. Well, that's because I edit them out. I cough all the time. You know, but if we have to do it as adults to protect 
the next adults that grow up because kids are just adults college students are just adults future adults are they not I mean come on think about it how many times are we gonna complain about our parents parents screwing up and not grabbing life by the harnesses you know I don't, I don't, we don't need B.O.B. to send some you know high altitude balloon up there I don't know who he is I've never met the guy <clears throat> you'll meet me in Denver in November though I'm a real boy I'm not any different than any other human being that has the drive that has a spirit in them to do things but this world drags you into it it wants you and you want it you have to find a reason <laughs> you got to find a reason behind the the curtain that you don't want this anymore and that's why I focus on going to college you know I focus on going to the college students because they are our future you know yeah there's a lot of ignorant kids out there you know there's a lot of kids that just believe the state they want to believe the state they want to believe the state because they want to continue to do what they're doing that's why they don't want to have to pull up their bootstraps and do something that's and that's somewhat cowardice behavior and that's fine I used to be there too but if I was 20 years old again if I was 22 years old again in 2018 and somebody presented flat earth to me I mean that's a rev that's a revolutionary idea that's a that's a revolutionary thought you know to grow up where we grew up and we're you know thinking that the moon landing is fake but then we still believe that we live on a spinning ball I mean come on that's psychological warfare right there right it never crossed your mind that the earth is flat but you still believe the moon landing was fake I mean they got you right there right and uh, yeah it took some time you know it took some time for you know people to get out of that and hear truth and then we all moved on to now being flat earthers but we need we need to start something on the ground level okay infiltration or not you know if somebody wants to come on board to the ship of 20 people and they want to throw a wrench into the the fix then they're gonna die too and they're gonna be held responsible okay but we can't sit we can't sit around and mope and think that well we can't do it because we're gonna get infiltrated so we just might as well just not do it what kind of thought life is that you know we know that we can't depend on NASA we know that we can't depend on uh, particularly the United States government and all the other governments that are on earth to give us the answers that we in our heart want we want I did not I'm not here to bring peace I'm not here to to kumbaya I'm not here to be the president I'm not here to be a king over everybody I'm here to bring truth okay and whatever that is we need to be prepared for whatever truth that is and then that truth will just in itself bring unity to the of the human race and you know that you know this whole race thing this whole division thing it's garbage there are no there are no races we are all one race it's called the human race and you can be discriminatory towards somebody of a different color that's and that's your choice that's up to you you will be held accountable to that but that's not racism that's just ignorance that's just uh, tradition that's how you were raised that's society pushing narratives on other people now what I do have a problem with is uh, agendas that promote the non procreation of human beings I do have a problem with that because if those thought if those lifestyles continue in 200 years the human race will be gone now if we were to trek out to outer space right if we were to trek to outer space would we 
you know, find, would we have to be part of a, a new human race? I don't know. You know, but we have to, uh, from all colors, all different, anybody who wants to jump on board, you know, and be real about this, any color, any country that you're from, otherwise we're depending on somebody else to do it. We're displacing our own authority onto somebody else, and that's no different than talking to these college students who believe what they're being taught and what they were told by a teacher. And then that teacher believes what they were taught and told by another teacher, and so on and so on, and the cycle continues. That thought life needs to be extinguished. That thought life needs to be extinct. I'm not saying that the person needs to go. I'm saying that there needs to be heavy reverse psychological means to get people to stop thinking that outer space is outer space. You know, does that make sense? How we were just talking about more land just means outer space. Italy in the house. Good to see you. <clears throat> Flatjack. Neil, good to see you. Critical Inception. Thank you, sir. Like, <laughs> you know, you give you give people a chance, and you give them an opportunity, right? You have to allow people to be themselves. And, and when you give people an opportunity and you discern what they're saying is flies coming out of their mouth and vitriol and, and maybe so far as jealousy and, and just disdain to see somebody else be successful, then you know what that type of person is. And then that's when you can, you can rightfully and righteously judge them. And you can say, okay, that's how this person is. I'm not going to give you any more opportunities anymore. Sorry. You know? Like, yeah, I can forgive you, but I'm not going to be an idiot, right? Fool me once, right? <laughs> You're not going to be able to fool me again. You know? And, and that's where we're at right now. You know, we have been fooled, okay, over and over again. And it's It's over. It can't, we can't have continually uh, have the wool pulled over our eyes because if, if Flat Earth was the, the epiphany of all epiphanies that just kind of melded up last three years here, three years ago, what's next? You know, what are they going to give, what are they going to allow us to hear or research next? More land? Probably not. It's always going to be about up there. You know, they're talking about the Vulcan planet. They, they found the planet Vulcan. Come on. Like, that is, that, that's, that's demonic. That is flies coming out of somebody's mouth. You are thinking, like, this is a good idea. Let's tell the public that we found another planet called Vulcan that we'll never go to in anybody's lifetime. But you know what we could go to is one of these islands 20,000 miles south of us, right? Or maybe the North Pole, because those are reasonable ideas to get a quote GoFundMe page together. <laughs> you know? All we have to do is prove the uh, Earth is flat, simply measure Antarctica by charting a ship. Well, I mean, if you're talking about, like, circumnavigating Antarctica. I mean... So, I mean, if there is this alleged ice wall, I mean, are we talking like there's a canal that goes through it? You know, like how I was showing on the outer space picture? I don't know. Yeah, 20 miles south. Yeah, exactly. Five thousand, you know, ten thousand miles south. I don't know. You tell me. 
Yeah, you know, like when I shave. Look like, yeah, I, then that's what's fun. That's what's fun about going to the college is, you know, I look like I'm just, I'm a fifth year senior. IPS is enclosed creationism threatened by exploration. I'm not threatened by it. <laughs> I'm not. I'm on board right 100% right now. Give me a boat and give me the supplies so I can so I can go out and anybody else who's with me, you tell your family our adios and we leave for like two years and we see what happens. We wing it and we see what happens. And that's it. You know? Take a compass. We take all of all of the the the, the constellation exploration how to navigate in the stars. If you know how to navigate the stars to go south without having to use a compass, because I think possibly the further south that we get, the further away we're going to be from the magnetic north, and we might not be able to use compasses anymore. I want to know what else is out there. This isn't it. You know? Flat Trotter, good to see you. Flat Earth Vegans. <laughs> Captain Cook allegedly sailed around and he didn't mention any canal. But they got me thinking like the ice melts and creates an opening, uh, possibly. What about Skyfall? Is the dome going to fall on us <laughs> before we can explore? I don't think so, no. Um, yeah, I mean like the sprites and stuff. I saw some video about sprites. Um, will our creator keep us from exploring? I don't, I don't think so, to be honest with you. I think the people here will keep us from exploring, which is why the Antarctic Treaty is not established as it is right now, is because I think the Antarctic Treaty is fear-mongering, personally. And I don't think that's right. You don't, if, if you think you have a right, and it can be taken away during an emergency broadcast of your country, you don't have any rights. Does that make sense? If the United States government declares an emergency on the entire country, they have a right to escort you to a FEMA camp or take your property away or take your guns and tell you where to go until this emergency broadcast is over. You have no rights when there is an emergency broadcast. Mark Sargent said there is a barrier after Antarctica, so we need to explore, right? No need to explore. Uh, no, we need to explore um, because I don't know what's out there. I don't know what's out there. I don't know. It sounds great. I've, I've watched Under the Dome. It was a great TV show, and I suggest people watch that show, Under the Dome. It's entertaining. But it's also more um, M. Night Shyamalan The Village. It's keeping you in a prison. It's more Truman Show stuff. It's more fear-mongering. It's more, hey, you know, that's already down there. There's no need, you know, to get down there. Just let it go, Josh. Just hang out here. Buy a PS5, you know. Buy virtual reality. And then you can download your consciousness and just create your own reality in front of you through virtual reality. And artificial intelligence. And just download a, a chip into your head. And just stay here. You know what? Ten years ago, I might have been on board with that. You know? But not anymore. I know for sure there's something wrong with this place. And it wants to keep us away from who we are, where we come from, and why we're here. And exploring is the only way to do that. Whether it's the South Pole or the North Pole. I, I have always said the North Pole. I, I, I mean, the Antarctica sounds great and everything. Um, but the North Pole, to me, it just sounds more fascinating. Because it's the only, it's the pole right above us. And your Southern Celestial Pole, I already debunked your Southern Celestial Pole. You continue to travel south, sooner or later your southern celestial pole will be right above you and then you can't see the North Pole anymore, can you? And then you continue to go south and soon the southern celestial pole that we call the southern celestial pole now then becomes our North Pole. 
And then we have a new southern celestial pole. I don't know, 10,000 miles south of us or something? I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. Debunked. There goes your southern celestial pole. You can't debunk, so you can't debunk flat earth anymore with that bull, bull crap. It's malarkey. You can't hang on to that anymore. So get out of here with that. You can trick young minds into the southern celestial pole malarkey. But if I get a hold of them and I show them on a piece of paper what it could be like, you will lose all credibility. Your mind control will be broken. They will be snapped out of their hypnosis state. And that's what we as flat earthers are. <clears throat> we are walking around snapping people out of their hypnosis. Now, whether these people want to be woken up or not, you know, that's up to them. You know, we don't know what they do behind closed doors, what they're researching, what they're watching. They might think that we're all just rejects. That's fine. But they'll be held accountable in the end. You know, Nathan Oakley, good to see you. Nitpoom, most electronics wouldn't work without knowledge of quantum mechanics, of course. Give me a break. Full, full red pill or GTFO, predictive programming for the dome. There's to make this accept a dome so nobody explores. Yep. Yeah, all the predictive programming regarding the dome. Now, yeah, I think that there is a firmament above us. I think that there is a ceiling that keeps us in this pressurized system. We have, we live in a pressurized system. We cannot escape, right? Who said that, right? Bowtie. And so, I think that. But I also think that there's an, an infinite firmament. I think that there's an infinite land and infinite water that go up to a shoreline. And just shoreline to shoreline to shoreline. You know, you could, hey, you know what? All 70 people in this chat right now, you can have your own continent. I don't even care. Okay? Have your own continent. That's how much I could care less. But you know who does care? The people in control because they want to control you. And they want to control your mind. They want control over you. Because you are a sentient being. You are a spiritual being having a physical experience. And they know that if they control you, they can control what you believe and who you believe in. Where you go when you die. Where you don't go when you die. And if they can use that as to orchestrate what's above us, outer space, up there, then they have total mind control of you. But, like I showed that picture a second ago, if you think of outer space like this, then people aren't lying when they talk about outer space, are they? It's just two meanings. You know? What's up is down. What's down is up. You know? That's your English language right there. That's why they love the English language. That's why they created the English language. Because they know the English language has so many different meanings to it. There's opportunity for them. Because, because language coming out of your mouth is what resonates through the ether. And if it sounds true to you because of your worldview and what you were taught in your past... That's what you will think. So you will think, oh, outer space. Oh, okay, outer space. Planets, solar systems, stars, yada, yada. You know, but fascinating thought, right? Because nobody has an original thought themselves. You know, here's an idea about outer space. You know? Mm. Do you know the work of Martin Kenny? I do not, Marcel. You put a... I'll give you a wrench so you can put a link of Martin Kenny. I think I might have heard of uh, Martin Kenny, but I'm not sure. Nathan Oakley, space has been represented. Misrepresented. If you haven't gone to Nathan Oakley's 
streams. He does daily conversations about Flat Earth and Globe Earth. Very challenging um, for both sides. Very contentious. But if you are actually uh, on the fence or you're a Globe believer uh, and you just want to hang out in the background, uh, go to Nathan Oakley's channel. Oh, of course you can, Rob. Um, yeah, and so, you know, that's that's kind of where I'm at. I don't have a lot of opportunity to talk about this stuff when I'm out and about talking to, you know, the public and the students and whatnot, because this is very uh, in-depth stuff, you know. Um, I think it's important, though, because we can't, even as flat earthers, you know, I, I think it said, uh, my quote, in my video I put up this morning, you may be deceived if you trust too much, but you will live in torment if you don't trust enough. So you have to allow yourself some ability to be hurt. You, you got to give yourself vulnerability to be hurt if you want to trust somebody. Like trusting me, like giving me money to go to the Flat Earth International Conference. You have to trust me on whether or not I go, right, and whether or not I go and I bring uh, a positive, authentic uh, delivery to that, and I have to, I will be speaking for 40 minutes now, you know, I will be speaking at the Flat Earth International Conference in Denver, last year, I, I was a nobody, I'm still a nobody, I'm nobody, guys, I, I am so humbled by everybody who's in the chat who will watch this later uh, who has been watching me since Facebook I didn't think that it would get to this I'm no hero but I have always wanted to deliver a genuine experience for you to know that you are all witnesses now to the public and what they think about flat earth and what they think about the state and they love the state they love it they relish it. Anyone who goes against the state, it's like invasion of the body snatchers at the end. <laughs> you know, when Donald Sutherland points at her and starts screaming, and she's freaking out. That is exactly what it's going to be like in the future. I'm telling you. <clears throat> now, I don't, I don't say that we need to go explore as flat earthers to run away. I'm not saying it like that. I'm saying as flat earthers or people who don't trust the government, you know, whatever, de whatever degree that is, like on May 11th of next year, when we, when we bring truth, whatever that truth is to you, 9-11, chemtrails, vaccines, 5G, and it's not flat earth, we need to come together and say we've had it. We're just done. We're, we just can't do this anymore. I don't want to go to an island and start my own little civilization. That's not what I want to do. I want to get things done here because there are people here who need help, who are sick, who need to be woken up. Right? So it's not exploration to run away from problems. It's to bring truth back. It's for us as individuals who go on that trek to see truth, to see it for ourselves. Um, thanks, IPS. Appreciate that. Yeah, I mean, hey. I mean, right? I, I mean, last year when we were going to the Twins game, we were live streaming. That's when we that's when we coined flat smacking. You know, that's where flat smacking came from. Is the live streams that we were doing with IPS and myself at the Twins games, at the Vikings games, Lake Calhoun. That you guys talk about flat smacking, that's where it came from. So, you know, like it or not, that's where it came from. You know, um, 
How would the dome prevent exploration? That's flu foolishness. It's just the opposite. We want to find out what we have in all directions. Um, oddity, so... You must be talking to somebody else. <laughs> Uh, Nathan Oakley, I have no idea what's keeping in the pressure, but the fact is you can't have a gas pressure without a container unless you can show a demonstration that defies the second law of thermodynamics. Exactly. Anyone who insists anyone who insists on a dome using globe science is reinforcing enclosed system thinking. Well, I mean, it's a container. You know, that's all I can say. I can only vouch for myself. We're in a contained and closed system. Now, could our, our creator have created <laughs> an infinite dome, an infinite ceiling, right? An infinite firmament where it has no dome edge. It has no dome edge. It just goes on forever. And it's all contained and we're all pressurizing it. Yes. Because I believe, I think that our creator is all powerful, all knowing, and, and just infinitely wise. Un, un, we as human beings cannot even fathom infinite thought because we're not dead. I mean, and when we're dead, maybe we will have an idea of what infinite is. But here we're mortal beings and we have no understanding of what infinite is. But people believe infinite space all day, right? But when I bring up to college students an infinite plane, they're like, what? What? That's not true. I wanted to be an astronaut. Well, if you're not in a lodge right now, you're probably not going to be an astronaut. So you might want to go and talk to a Freemason. Right? You might want to try to get into a secret society right now, bud. At least get into one of these frats. Or a fraternity or a sorority or whatever, right? Because if you're not in one of those by now, and you're not going to be an astronaut. So you're behind the game. <laughs> it's just, don't follow men and give it, investigate yourself. That's right. Um, yeah, so I, I think that, it, you know, again, we, we only as individuals can, can do what we're led to do to make change on in our own re reality, right? And when we see others making moves that we agree with to make those moves, to change lives, to change our reality, to make changes about how things are so our kids' kids don't grow up in this cockroach-infested reality that we live in right now, this energy-harvesting uh, imps, then we need to we need to draw to those people, you know. Now some people aren't going to be ready to take the lead. It's just I mean yeah we don't want to have any leaders in flat earth yada yada yada, okay. But only sitting online and not doing anything out in the public and waking people up on an individual basis, it just isn't going to have much weight to it in my opinion. Now, yes, there are certain people who will, who will see a video about truth, whether it be 5G or Flat Earth or whatever, and, and very rarely will they ever, you know, look at the video on YouTube and then get that fire in their heart a couple months later and then vocalize it to their friends, family, or co-workers, or even strangers, <laughs> but that's a rare case. But again, we have to understand that people want to be led people have an innate uh about they they have they have something about them that where they want to be followers more though than leaders and that's where your flat earth uh, your closet flat earthers come into play you know you have flat earth, you have a lot of closet flat earthers out there guys you know they're looking for people Maybe not necessarily to follow, but agree with wholeheartedly. Say, you know what? I don't agree with everything that he says, but I agree with more of what he says than what the establishment says. Or I agree with what he's saying more so than this person over here. And I'm going to support this person. 
Now, whether that be through prayer, your your thoughts, you know, whatever, however new age you want to make it sound, or through your finances, because your finances, your money is energy. That's your energy that you've put into this reality. So it's important to you. Money and where you where you give it, where you offer it to, is more important than where you're going to vote in two months. Uh, in you know what is it? Probably six weeks from now. Your money, where you put it, is more... Because that's keeping this system alive. So are you more worried about keeping the system alive? Or are you more worried about trying to get this message out and getting things resolved? Do you want things resolved or not? It's not going to happen overnight. I'll tell you that right now. When I strapped on board last April, I knew that it wasn't going to happen overnight. And now look at where we're at. You know? There are so many new things coming out. We have a P9, P1000 out right now. You know, we have infrared. I wish, I, I wish that we could have some kind of credible mechanical way to measure over water. I wish we had a more, I wish I could feel more confident about some, some way to mechanically measure over water. I just, I can't. I don't see it right now. I don't see a way that we can, you know, it's just, <clears throat> I'll just leave it at that. I think you all know what I'm talking about, but the, the people who are up to speed know what I'm talking about. And I just don't think that it's out there right now. I just don't. I, I, visually, yes. Laser tests, I'll, I'll roll with the laser test. But still, you're going to have atmosphere in front of you that's going to diminish it, and it's you know, and so on and so on. So you have to be able to harness the ether to be able to shoot through, you know, the the at atmosphere or the dust and all the all the other p particles that are in in the air. That laser has to be able to shoot through it, no problem. I don't know if you got to if you got to have a heated laser. To be able to burn up the molecules that are around the laser. To get to see it 30 miles away. Like uh, as a dot. Not as you know something that kind of just shoots off. But infrared and you know P1000. You know unless you're above that. What, what, what I was talking about with. You know that, that uh, the dust and every all the molecules and the particles that come down and just settle where we live where we breathe, we're going to have difficulty doing that, you know? Unless you're able to get above that and, and use trig and understand that we can just see too far from a skyscraper and get above that. And so we can see, you know, and let's, I'll, I'll do this. this. And this came across my mind a couple of weeks ago. I'd start a GoFundMe for a high altitude balloon with an infrared camera on it. Who's doing that right now? You know? High altitude balloon with an infrared camera on it. And it's got to be genuine because I'm seeing people, whether they be trolls or not, they're just putting out into, into the air, oh, those pictures of high altitude balloons, those are CGI. Once you get past, what is it, they're saying 60, 80,000 feet, Anything higher than 80,000 feet is CGI. That's what they're saying now. So we need, we need to have some people who we can trust, who we feel confident about, that we could possibly get a high altitude balloon hooked up with a infrared camera and another, uh, you know, I mean, a P-1000 would be great to put on a high altitude balloon. Um... It's going to crash, right? And it's probably going to break, but we're going to have the memory card inside, you know. Um, but, you know, we have to start exploring, you know, some, some other ideas. I was already convinced weeks after I found out about Flat Earth. You know, so all that stuff would just be like, whoa, you know, like for new people. You know, like, whoa, the Earth is flat. Whoa, you know. If you're a senior in Flat Earth right now, if you're a junior in Flat Earth, if you've been in the game for three years, four years, like I have been, you're ready to start exploring now. 
You're ready to start moving on. You're ready to start doing this. Now, whether this, pe this, this picture is real or not, just look at the statement. <clears throat> you know, look at the statement, outer space. Okay, outer space doesn't mean outer space above you. It doesn't have to be. You know, it doesn't have to be. That's all I'm saying. Loose Hackett's in the house. Good to see you. Uh, Flatlander. Bella, good to see you. Thanks for Daniel in the house. When not. We know the, the earth moon distance down to a few centimeters. Good for you. Squirrel Sniper. Thanks for coming by. Yeah, we've been at it for about 90 minutes. I'm, I'm almost exhausted here. I think I've kind of exhausted like a lot of the thoughts that I've been thinking about. Um, RV life. Still trying to do that. You know, we do have to winterize the RV here. Um, maybe try to do some covert flat earth, uh, you know, flat smacking in the science museum or, you know, Mall of America and stuff over the winter time. Cause you know, let's be real here. It's going to be difficult to do that. Um, you know, at, at the university in January, right? I mean, come on. I can't believe how cold it gets in the state. I can't believe it. Um, just going through the chat here. I really appreciate everybody hanging out here and just listening to, to my thoughts. I hope I've provoked some of your minds out there. Um, <laughs> IPS Nathan is the realest flat earther out there next to authentic. <laughs> Thanks a lot for that. Uh, JP from Plain Earth. <laughs> Good to see ya. Flat Stuff Earth. Yeah, we got a, got a new t-shirt. Got this in the mail. <clears throat> if you got any um, materials, t-shirts, or anything that you want to send me, I'm, I'm definitely all about um, promoting your t-shirt. Um, yeah, I'll have to use discernment <laughs> about whether I want to you know wear that t-shirt or not. But this is basic. I mean, this is a basic flat earth t-shirt. I mean... Nothing controversial about this. I don't feel uncomfortable wearing this shirt. I feel um, confident about what this says and everything. I got this shirt from, apologies, Chris Watson. So I, I appreciate the shirt. I do have an email. You know, so if you're up to talking through email, you can always do that. And we can chat. There it is. So send me your spam. It's, it gets blocked anyway, so it doesn't matter. Um, and yeah, so and then I'll be at the Flat Earth International Conference in um, you know something like six, seven weeks now. Can't wait for that. It's in Denver. Get to fly into the Denver International Airport and get to see all the crazy shenanigans that are going on there. Um, it being the Flat Earth International Conference being in Denver, I have no problem with that. If I had the funds and I had the resources and everything, I'd live in Denver. I've been there a couple of times when I was like 15, 16 years old. I was living in a foster family for about three years until I graduated high school. And they had family in Denver. And I actually was able to talk them into going to a Colorado Rockies game. I think that was like one of the first few years of their inception. So, um, thanks, Lewis. Good to see you. Thanks, ma'am. Yeah, I... I Try to keep it, you know, I try to keep it um, on the level. You know, I don't, I don't want to just flatter, flatter, flatter. I do want to explore, literally, I do want to explore other possibilities of, of where we live and who we are as human beings and involve other people. Um, how much would the balloon infrared cost? I have no idea. I don't even know how much an infrared camera costs. Um, I know that to turn a P900 into one, I know that if you know cameras, it's pretty easy to change it into an infrared camera, but you got to know your stuff. I think to turn a P900 into um, an infrared camera 
have a professional do it. it might be 200 bucks i don't know um but email me let's i mean let's explore that i'd be down to doing that now yes we we would have to we would have to go i mean we would have to we would have to go through the permit process we would have to go through some kind of um faa type of regulations to be able to launch something like that up in the air we would have to get the state involved because we can't just launch a high altitude balloon up in the air and have a, a commercial airliner run into it i mean let's be real here we don't want to do that so we, we have to think about safety which is why when you have a drone you have to have um you know if you if your drone is capable i think of going a mile high you have to have some kind of regulations on it you have to register it so we do we do have to play the game somewhat and and i guess i have no problem with that um uh lewis hack the state will help you it's a long term yeah um how high do we want to get this balloon to go is another thing uh, what we'll need to do it i feel confident in doing it i could I want to do it. You know, we could go up north here in Minnesota, and we could, there's a lot of, you know, I mean, let's do it, Patrick, right? I'll come up to Fargo, and we can launch a high-altitude balloon from Fargo, you know? Um, I live right on the strip of a main drag here in Minneapolis, and there's a lot of men who drive their trucks at the four-way stop here. They got to let you know that they watch NFL football. They drink uh, Mick Golden or Milwaukee's Best. And that they have three girlfriends. And one of them is in the truck right now. So, <laughs> it's, I, I wear earplugs, you know, when I sleep. I have been for years. But, you know, it's, I don't know, it's funny to me. Yeah, so infrared camera, P, P900, P1000, if you're willing to have it break when it lands. Totally up to you. Um, customize a GoPro lens, high altitude balloon. I don't know. I wouldn't. I wouldn't want it to be. And this is probably totally lowballing it. And I'm probably out of my league right now. Twenty to forty thousand dollars to do it. High altitude balloon, like a quality high altitude balloon, weather balloon, um, material type of thing. I would feel comfortable doing that. I, I, I think I would do that because I think other people need to see that. <coughs> For me, I'm pretty settled in my heart about the earth and, and where I live and whatnot. Not what shape in terms of what the continents look like and everything. I don't know what that looks like, right? I don't know if we can even get high enough to see what the continents look like. I, I think a lot of the stuff that we've mapped out, uh, and that's where the whole Carmen line comes in. You know, the 62 mile um point so um yeah it is <laughs> so um and uh well i mean we could start to close up shop if you guys have any questions for me um shoot them shoot them at me i'll i'd be happy to answer reasonable questions that you have um nothing vulgar you know whatever you know what i mean mm. yep we got ephesians day on on may 11th if you look at the bible verse about ephesians 5 11 it's pretty um it's pretty on point it happens to be a saturday in may may 11th you only need a 5k camera gps tracker balancing equipment parachute and ultimator and of course the balloon for sure why is the sky blue nathan well because the oceans uh and the sun the sun reflects the ocean and in the, the reflection is so powerful to be able to reflect it onto the sky <laughs> you know i can't like some of the stuff that you're taught growing up and you just look back at it and regardless of whether it's earth stuff or anything like even years ago, when people would tell you things about, you know, who they are, uh, tell you facts about things, and then you investigate them, and, and they don't know what really they're talking about. 
you really do have to look into stuff and you have to ask people questions to find out uh you know it's, it's is that really true like why is this this way why are you that way you know what's up you know and and there's nothing wrong with asking questions you know <laughs> I think it's uh, neon gas or something activated by the sun that makes the blue color. Yeah, I think it has something to do with like um, blue is the the color that we our eyes see the most or something like that. Like uh, in in our in our atmosphere, or it could be because there's water above us, right? Well, water isn't blue, right? Well. Um, it's a great idea idea if Jay Dolan can see 500 miles. Um, goldfish brain, are you spiritualistic? Believe in chakras? I don't um, believe in that type of um, talk. Um, I, I will go so as far as to talk about the pineal gland. I do, I do have a strong feeling about the pineal gland and how <laughs> the higher-ups have a, a, an understanding that there is a part of our brain in the physical realm that has some kind of uh, antennae, uh, conduit, if you will, to a spiritual side. Now, with that being said, can you, and I'm a, you know, I'm a follower of Christ, so, you know, bear with me. Can your can the pollution of you drinking fluoride, eating crappy food, and so on and so on keep you from salvation through Jesus Christ and talking to God, our Creator? No, it can't. But I think that when you are given that information and you have a new responsibility with that, I have a new responsibility with understanding the pineal gland. Um, I share a lot of this stuff a couple of days ago with like frequencies music, words, thoughts are water, you know, so like you're, you're water, right? I mean, that's why I drink distilled water the most. I'm drinking coffee right now as a stimulant, right? Cause I'm a drug addict and, and I have uh, a, a particular, you know, thought life with how the pineal gland interacts with our spirituality. <coughs> but in relation to like like chakras and like here pineal gland third eye and like here down here and here um, I just don't subscribe to that um, because then I think you're in bondage and I don't think our creator made us to be in bondage to other things just like having something on your dash in your car um, that you use as some kind of an idol or something that you pray to or you talk to or whatever um, that is a graven image of something that probably didn't exist because that's a person. And it kind of goes along the lines of a broken clock is right twice a day. And so if you're asking for something or in, in your heart you're praying and you're thinking about something to manifest in your reality, especially if you speak it out loud, <clears throat> there are certain entities around you that I feel like our creator will kind of allow things to happen, right? With Job, for example. <clears throat> and he will allow you to become in bondage with that. I feel like um, I was in bondage to a relationship uh, about 11 years ago. And in that relationship is when I was introduced to the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's just how I was led, right? And I had to make a decision on whether or not I wanted to stay in this relationship. And of course, the girl that I was in a relationship with was the epitome of everything that I had asked for, right? She was good looking. We got along great. We listened to the same music. We got along tremendously. And then I was introduced to, to our creator, right? And I had to make a choice and I chose God over her. And, and it took me a while to realize, now whether you agree with this or not, I feel like I, I manifested a situation that I wanted to have happen, and God allowed that to happen, and the enemy used that as an opportunity to get me in bondage with her. 
Now, he didn't know I was going to, in the future, come across the gospel or not, right? But God knew, and I had to make a decision. And I think that we put ourselves in situations like that all the time, where we're in bondage to something. Now, whether that be alcohol, drugs, a woman, your job, your family, um, success, notoriety, attention... Um, you, these are things that you have to constantly let go of regularly and be able to say, if I had to let that go right now, I could. And sometimes you're asked to let that go and sometimes you're not. So, so that's, that's, I guess, kind of, you know, how I feel about that in terms of, um, you know, spirituality and stuff. I think that it's important for people to understand whether they're in bondage or not. And some people, uh, that is um, something that can only be revealed to them. And I think a lot of college students, I mean, back to the topic, um, I think a lot of college students are in bondage to their education. And it's very hard to see, the, um, to see that they are in a hypnosis state while they're at school. It, it's hard. I mean, how are you going to be able to... Um, go about your business as a woke person in a college nowadays and, and just to go along to get along. Like, you have to ace your tests, right? You have to go along with what they're telling you where in the back of your mind you know it's a lie. And really, I think it's most important to get the teachers involved. If we're able to get the teachers involved and show them, just like um, Harry was able to talk to a guy yesterday or the other day who was a teacher and he said I had to quit because I realized like I was teaching these kids a false narrative about reality and and that was his decision he had to do so um P. Mar says I just let go of weed good for you that that's a huge thing um I think that's bondage um I think that People use marijuana as a means to become more spiritual. Um, I have in the past seen that if I go weeks without um, smoking, and then like if I was to smoke, I could write three pages. Be like, oh man, like I got all these really cool thoughts, really cool thoughts. And you look back years years later, and you're just like, <laughs> you know, why wasn't I? A why am I not able to come up with these? you know, epiphanies when I'm sober, you know, and I think that, you know, marijuana does keep people in bondage, and I, and I think that if you use it as a, uh, off and on, you know, and you don't do it every day as a means to get your, you're addicted to it then, you're dependent on it, and if you were to say that um, I could quit any time, then, and you don't, then that just shows that you are in bondage to something. Same with alcohol. You know, I grew up in an alcoholic family. And I was, thankfully, uh, now, you know, in the past, I went through my spouts with alcohol and whatever. I was 21 once also. I was 22. <coughs> and even a number of years ago, I got into what I felt was an issue with alcohol. And I didn't want it anymore because I... I I started to get angry over dumb things, like even just enjoy, trying to enjoy a video game, and you drink, and the video game doesn't do what you want it to, and you start swearing, and this anger builds up in your heart. You know, if, if you need something, or you use something that makes you angry, or makes you more angry than you would be if you were sober, you have to reevaluate whether you need that in your life or not, and that goes for relationships. You know, do not be unequally yoked. Um, I, I think that having, yes, of course, having a relationship with our creator is the most important thing to have. <clears throat> if somebody is distracting that relationship between you and the creator, you need to reevaluate your relationship with that guy or girl. Doesn't matter whether the sex is great, whether she does this for you, he's this great guy and you've never found anything like him before. But if you're in bondage to him, and especially if you're not married, okay, if you're not married to him, 
and you're living together and you're just living it up and you just you think that he's he's the bee's knees or she's the best thing that's ever happened to you that's just my opinion you know you need to reevaluate your relationship with your creator and your relationship with this guy or girl you know and a lot of the times like and I've seen this with just being a flat earther if you're not, you're not able to grow as a flat earther, if this person is hindering you from from being a flat earther, or your job is hindering you from you know elevating yourself to the next level, you're in bondage. You know, you're you're at a you're at a particular frequency where you're not going to be able to grow. And I felt like that when I was in that relationship with that girl, and uh, you know, over a decade ago, I was with her for like seven months after I had believed. And I was just like, I can't, I can't do this anymore. I can't do this anymore. I can't do, but I kept doing it and I kept doing it. And I know that a lot of people who are on the fence about Flat Earth are afraid of what their friends, family, co-workers will think, their girlfriend or their boyfriend will think about them. If you're worried about that, you're in bondage. Then you're not going to be able to be who you're supposed to be. And I think that's where a lot of closet flat earthers get into trouble because they're not able to be who they're, who they're really supposed to be. Now, that doesn't mean that you leave your job and you leave everything and you buy an RV or a van and then you live in that for the rest of your life, right? I'm not saying that. But what I am saying, if, if there are things around you that are withholding you from being in a more intimate relationship with our creator, that's a problem. And once you get that settled, if you're able to then figure out how to deal with the whole flat earth, globe earth idea, then then you're going to be able to grow more. And you don't have to just become an evangelist about flat earth or the gospel, okay, about our creator. You don't not saying that. But I am saying that you will just feel this like this weight. I don't I can't explain it. There's just like this weight lifted off your shoulders when you can just Walk around in confidence with your chest out. Just be like, yeah, this is who I am. Big deal. What are you going to do about it? I'm held accountable to my creator. Not to you. Because you call me a name. You know? I'm not held accountable because my family members don't agree with what I'm doing. That's not, that's not my responsibility to s save them or bring knowledge to them. I have a particular situation where a lot of my family members are just just hard in the head. That's just that's just my situation. I hear and I get emails all the time from people. Hey, I woke my 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 family up. I woke my wife up. My husband is the only one that thinks flat earth is the truth and everybody else thinks it's malarkey. You know, if that's where you need to be, then that's where you need to be. <clears throat> but to go around and and feel like, you know, you need to win souls or win your family over, that's a lot of pressure. That's not your responsibility. You know, if you're not led to do that, don't force yourself to do something you're not meant to do. Okay? Your past has to line up with what you're doing. Teaching English in Thailand for eight months with kids all the way up to like 70 year olds every day for eight months. That's what I did. I taught English for eight months. So for whatever reason, that led me to what I'm doing now. You know, but look at your past. You know, I see a lot of people in the community, like with sales um, experience or, you know, uh, customer service type stuff. And, <coughs> no! yeah, I'm a man. And if you, you know, you feel like you have like, I'm a science buff, you know, and I'm a mechanical scientist or whatever, you know, like Brian Mullen. You know, if you have that, teach that to other people, you know, bring that up, you know, but if, if people, demons, these energy harvesters call your work and tell you, 
tell your boss that you're doing something in your own personal life and you have to choose between raising your family okay or sharing truth with other people hey by all means man you got to do what you got to do i get it you know but those people will be held accountable for that okay so you might have to back away a little bit you know but hey <laughs> Tiger Dan, if you're out there, Brian Mullen, if you're going to the conference and you come in with like a garb on your face and you don't look the way that you look, pull me into some room and let's shake hands. I won't say anything, you know, I won't say that I met you, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> it's just, you get that all the time, like, especially like the guys who have motorcycles, I mean, it's just ridiculous. You hear them there? Rawr! And it's like, they just... I wish I had that expendable income to be able to, like, waste gasoline like that at every intersection and let everybody know, I'm here! Listen to me! It's like Alex Jones, right? Every time I hear somebody... Um, <laughs> I think of Alex, the Alex Jones rant. Every time like, somebody accelerates at these this intersection... Rawr! So, Kevin Michael, good to see you. Thanks. This is a long time caller, first time listener. <laughs> every, every time I call Mark Sargent's, uh, sh um, every time I call his, uh, his show, I say that, and he like acts like uh, he's never heard it before. It's like, who is this? That's funny to me. So, trying to catch up on track on the, the chat room here we'll try to close up shop here in a couple minutes try to keep this under two hours but i know globusters is going on i really appreciate everybody just hanging out um listening to my thoughts i, I hope it, it um brought something new to you um now whether you agree with it or not you know that's totally up to you um rob thank you sir oh jesse james is in the house good to see you jesse james funny you're not blocked <laughs> Uh, Andy Pandy, <laughs> good to see you, grounded by flat earth, <laughs> uh, <laughs> goldfish brain, yeah, all right, well, I think that's about it, I mean, unless you guys have any other questions, I think we can kind of wrap it up i will be trying to edit and upload a video that lois and i did on september 11th and i have still a video from gosh a couple months ago that i haven't put together yet yesterday when i was out just a quick update with yesterday why it was only 35 minutes i was there for about three hours and that's all i was able to come up with people just weren't up to chatting yesterday um, I appreciate the comments that I did get about that setup or whatever. I think that's really actually a good spot to be. And I think in the future, I will do um, like table setup in the morning during the week when class is in session. I also have another four-way intersection um, inside, kind of like inside the belly of the beast, you know, that we uh, did round two with um, Dum Dum Sucker that one time. And so... Yeah, so I'm definitely going to be out there. Um, it's only September 23rd. I'm not 100% sure about the weather. The last week, uh, it was raining all the time. And finally, on Thursday, we, uh, you know, by all means, I'm not downgrading what happened on the East Coast because I wasn't there with the hurricane and everything. But on Thursday night, we got torrential rain. It was really bad. I got a video of it, too, and it was like flooding i had to like backtrack i didn't want to ruin my car and drive it through um you know water that was coming up to the top of my tires so finally it cleared up um recently so i was able to get out there and do some chatting with the public i love talking to college students um you got to be really patient with these kids uh tomorrow tuesday wednesday looks good Thursday it says it might rain 
so yeah, I mean, yeah, we'll see what happens. Um, I thought it was funny, um, whether you believe me or not, I do, you know, I don't obsessively look at, you know, my videos and see how many people are watching or anything, but, um, there was a two-day period where I noticed my 9-11 video was stuck on 965 views. <laughs> I, I just thought that was a bit ironic. So, 9, 6, 5, so you add 6 and 5, it's 11, so 9, 11. It was stuck on that number for two days and usually within a 24-hour period it will like kind of catch up and give you more of a realistic idea of how many views you have um i have an idea that maybe my views and subs get throttled um i'm not worried about it because i go out to the public and i talk to people so um, i'm not too worried about my subs and subscribers and losing subscriptions <laughs> um that sucks for nathan roberts your curveless earth, losing that many subs all at one time, you know, um, but what do you expect? You're on a private entity, you're using their platform, and they feel like they can do whatever they want as per their video uh, testimony that they did a couple of months ago about throttling flat earth content, so figure it out. Um, who cares? Good to see ya. Shanna, good to see ya. Zane, Patricia Pearson, hello. Glenn Clark, uh, Tina, good to see you. Thanks so much for your prayers. Hope to see you guys sometime out on the streets. I should go out on the street in the next couple, three days here. So uh, you or Chris, you should give me a text and we should should get together. Um, Goldfish Brain. Yeah, so I think that's it, everybody. Um, God bless. Thanks a lot. Stay safe out there. Whatever it is that you feel passionate about, share with others. Um, if you feel confident enough about what you believe, why not tell other people? I think that telling other people, you get a better barometer of whether you're speaking truth or not. Now, I'm not saying that you have to have a bunch of yes men around you either. You know, but bring up stuff that sounds a bit controversial. Bring up stuff that, you know... That might sound uh, that doesn't doesn't necessarily go around with the mainstream. I'm not saying flat Earth, right? But you know, for a lot of the the Globers out there or trolls, you know, by lack of a better term, no offense. But if if you do believe what you believe, don't just assume that everybody else believes it, and you just point your finger at all the flat Earthers, right? I mean, there's a lot of Globers out there that believe a lot of really wild, crazy stuff. You know, I mean, I, I've watched some of the <clears throat> some of the more recent, um, you know, QAnon stuff talking about how the moon landing is real. People think QAnon is real and they're truthers and they're a real entity that are bringing out truth. But then they say that. Are they saying that because they don't want to say the earth is flat and then just pigeonhole themselves into a particular group? Yeah! Feel it! I'm a man! I got hot blood beating my chest! And, you know, if you feel like, uh, you know, sharing your truth with other people, like QAnon apparently does, you can't pigeonhole yourself. You can't talk about things that are totally off the wall, like Flat Earth. So you have to say the moon landings were real, because then you're going to draw more people into that. But then... I hear flat earthers say, yeah, QAnon does say some truth, and, you know, I think they're the real deal, yada, 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 but, you know, then they go off and they say something like that. So, um, I'll leave you all with that and that. <laughs> so, uh, hope you all have a good rest of your Sunday. Have a good week. Hope to see you out there on the streets. Peace.